OPEC cuts production, boosting fears of even higher fuel prices. It becomes a major election issue as the president says he's disappointed with OPEC's move. Hello, welcome to Business Today. I'm Jamie Robertson. I'm in London. And I'm Tanya Beckett. I'm in New York. A warm welcome. Now, higher fuel prices could be in the pipeline, so to speak, uh, after OPEC decided to press ahead with planned production cuts. At its meeting in Vienna, the cartel of oil-producing countries rubber-stamped a previous decision to cut output by a million barrels a day, ignoring the concerns of oil consumers over near record prices. The BBC's Andrew Walker is at the OPEC meeting in Vienna. The cut in official output quotas was initially agreed last month to come into force on the 1st of April with the aim of preventing a fall in prices. In the meantime, prices have risen substantially. Nonetheless, the group has decided to go ahead and reduce its official quotas as planned. They fear a fall in prices due to the usual seasonal decline in sales at the end of the Northern Hemisphere winter. This is not the news that oil importing countries wanted to hear. The high price of petrol at the pump has become an issue in United States politics, and there have been reports that the US has been lobbying some OPEC members for a different decision. In the event, prices probably would rise, provided that OPEC can successfully implement this decision. But many analysts doubt that it will. They are putting their footprint on this market by uh, meeting regularly, cutting production, surprising the market. Uh, they're really defending what is a falling asset because their assets are, are oil, denominated in dollars, and the dollar in this decade has been falling quite dramatically. But even if OPEC does not fully abide by its own decision, it has sent a signal that it wants to keep prices relatively strong. Andrew Walker, BBC News, Vienna. So as you just heard, fuel prices are turning into a major election issue in the US. President Bush said he's disappointed with the move from OPEC. A gallon of gasoline here now costs just under $2, a record price that's making many drivers very unhappy. As Kate Noble reports, President Bush and Democratic challenger John Kerry both claim they'll fix the problem. Some people have wacky ideas like taxing gasoline more so people drive less. That's John Kerry. The Bush campaign already has TV commercials attacking John Kerry's voting record on gas prices. But not to be outdone, the Democrats' nominee has also been campaigning on prices at the pump. If the gas prices keep rising at the rate they're going now, Dick Cheney and George Bush are going to have to carpool to work. So with gas prices sitting near record highs, this has become one of the most contentious issues of the presidential campaign. Both candidates know that U.S. consumers and businesses are deeply concerned about high gas prices. No one is more worried than New York taxi drivers, who can always be counted on for an opinion. Peter Franklin, otherwise known as the Gabby Cabby, says high gas prices threaten his ability to make a living. It's going to come directly out of my, my money, and the reason for that is it's the obligation of the cab driver to fill up the cab. So let's say it's now costing $25, maybe it'll cost $35, maybe it'll cost $40. You multiply that times five times a week, five days a week, and you can see the difference. Yeah, it's going to hurt a lot. Like many other business people, taxi drivers see high prices at the pump as an extra tax on their income, and they want something done about it. So in this presidential election year, high gas prices are sure to add fuel to the campaign fire. Kate Noble, BBC News, New York. Uh, Tom James is Associate Director of Commodity Derivatives at Tokyo Mitsubishi International. He joins me now. One of the things that puzzles me slightly is there's a lot of oil in the world, and yet prices have stayed so high. Why is that? I think it's a logistical thing. I mean, you have all the oil in the Middle East primarily and all the demand in the West, so it's a matter of shipping it in the right place quickly enough. Um, what is surprising, though, is that we have seen oil arriving in the States now, and even today we've had you a know, build of 5 million barrels in, in the stocks. Um, which did allow prices to ease a little. But do you think they could go further? I think um, oil is arriving in the US now. Um, also, um, the White House's uh, comments certainly has, has rung alarm bells with the producers that prices have been quite high for quite some time and maybe it's uh, time they, they ease off. Tom, Tanya Beckett joining you here from New York. Uh, they have been high, but of course in dollar terms, and the dollar is weak. Is there anything that the U.S. should be doing unilaterally to, to, unilaterally to help itself? 
It's, well, it's very highly political. I guess um, White House is in a tricky situation. They have the government stocks called the Strategic uh, Petroleum Reserve, SPR, which has been released in the past, you know, in, in, under previous uh, uh, governments uh, to ease prices domestically. Um, but if he does that, he could obviously uh, come under a lot of scrutiny uh, coming up ahead of elections. So the easiest uh, diplomatic approach right now is to try to put pressure on the Middle East to, to not cut back. Um, Tom, uh, what about the, the supply that's coming on elsewhere in the world? I mean, there's Russian supply, there's like, Libya they've been talking about, Iraq is supplying something like two million barrels a day. Surely all this is going to be pushing prices down even further. It is. In fact, the Middle East producers, OPEC producers, are uh, walking a very thin tightrope because they have got very high oil prices but it does mean that banks and financial institutions are heavily investing in other you know Russian oil sources other sources in Alaska etc with these high oil prices it means that it makes economical sense what about in terms of speculators a lot has been said about speculators recently about what they're doing to this very high uh, oil price it is a fair comment I mean uh, speculators have been big buyers of the, the forward oil market since <clears throat> probably November of last year, um, but they, you know, they are just picking up on, you know, the fundamental fact that um, you know oil hadn't been getting in the right place at the right time. Um, recently, it is fair to say, and there has been some comments I've read about gasoline. And you know, funds and futures speculators have been buying gasoline futures and pushing prices up. Uh, OPEC must be pretty worried that the suddenly the whole thing might turn. That, OPEC, that uh, speculators might suddenly t turn around and start selling. Yes, we we have seen a bit of selling in recent weeks coming up to the OPEC meeting. I think there they was. They do act in a kind of herd, the herd mentality on something like this, don't they? That's right. Yes, I think at the moment the market um, is waiting to see whether OPEC will indeed be able to cut back. In fact, some nations of OPEC members have been increasing production leading up to this. This is the old discipline first. problem. Of exactly. Yes. Right. Okay, Tom. We'll leave it there. Thanks very much indeed.